Hey everyone, I'm here to talk to you today about the properties of water. Um, this is included in AP Bio's first unit, unit one, called the chemicals of life. So in this lecture, you're going to find out some basic principles and properties of water and how they can be applied to living things. So let's get started. All right, so one of the first things I like talking about when we discuss principles and properties of waters is this lizard. Um, this lizard is called the Jesus Christ lizard, also known as the common basilisk lizard. And why it's called the Jesus Christ lizard is because when it runs, it really does walk on, or I should say run on water. And the reason for this is it all has to do with water and its properties. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. But I want you just to keep it in your mind when we're talking about water and just some of the cool, neat things that water has the ability to do, like support this lizard when it runs. So one of the first things you should know about water is that it's a polar molecule. OK, so what does that mean? Well, water is composed of two hydrogens and one oxygen, right? You've been learning about that since grade school. However, because um, the electrons are being shared, we call that covalent bonding. So the hydrogen and the oxygen, they are sharing electrons, and so they're forming covalent bonds. However, the molecule is polar, and the reason we call it polar is because instead of the electrons being equally shared and having no real charge, um, it's polar, and that means one of the elements is slightly pulling on the other element's electrons. And so what element is causing the pull, the tug? It is oxygen. Oxygen is very electronegative. And the reason for that is it's valence electrons. Oxygen is missing two valence electrons to make its happy octet rule. So it obviously goes and finds these two electrons from two hydrogens, but it is pulling a little on the hydrogens. Now, why is this significant? Well, when you take the oxygen of one water molecule and you put it near the hydrogen of another water molecule, they're actually attracted and it forms these hydrogen bonds that holds water, lots of water molecules together. So cohesion is a property that water has because the hydrogen and oxygen of different water molecules are attracted together and they form these hydrogen bonds. Now, because the hydrogen bonds occur, the water molecules stick together and that is called cohesion. And why is that important in biological systems or you know living systems? That's because um, when you get water sticking together, if you move the water, like one water molecule, then others will follow. And this is the case when you have these giant, huge trees. If you've ever wondered, like, how do you have these huge trees and water can reach the top of the tree? Well, that's because as long as you get the water moving by maybe opening the stomata or having transpiration occur where water is leaving the plant, then you get water being kind of pulled out of the plant. And when that pulling action happens, then the water will start moving. And if they're kind of connected together because of cohesion, then the water can actually move up to great heights in a tree. Cohesion also explains what we saw in our first video with the Jesus Christ lizard. Um, cohesion creates surface tension. So it kind of creates this ability not necessarily to hold someone as heavy as me, but definitely smaller creatures can appear to walk on water because the water molecules, they kind of shrink and they hold each other in place because of the hydrogen bonding. And so when it creates that surface tension, it allows things to be able to be on top of it. Another property that water has is called adhesion. An adhesion is the attraction of water to other materials. And this is also seen in plants because sometimes water in the inside of plants will get attracted to, for example, the side walls of the xylem. And so then the water will stick to the side of the wall and actually, again, can move up through gravity because it's being attracted to the side of a material. 
So I just love this image because it's it makes it really easy to understand. So cohesion is when water likes water and they stick together and that creates the surface tension. Adhesion is another property that water has, but that's water just being attracted to another material and it helps them stick together. So cohesion, adhesion, I know they sound very similar, but they're actually two different things. Right. And then this is what I was talking about. So you have these giant trees, right? Like sequoias, 100 feet in, in length. So how does water get all the way to the top of a 100-foot tree? Well, cohesion in the xylem, which is the transporting vessel of plants, allows water to stick with water, right? And so if water is getting pulled up the tree through transpiration and opening of the stomata, then the water molecules can hold together and then they go up. Adhesion is when the water molecules kind of stick onto the xylem wall, and that also helps them get pulled up to the top of the tree. All right, another great property of water is that it's like the ultimate solvent. Um, think back to chemistry, solutes and solvents. So solutes are usually the things that you dissolve in a solvent. Okay, so solutes, for example, like um, Kool-Aid, right? That sugar packet, that is the solute. And of course, you mix it and you dissolve it in water, and the water would be an aqueous solvent. And it's really great at being a solvent for other polar molecules. And so a lot of times you will see things dissolve and so forth in the ultimate solvent, which is water. Another property that you should know about water is that it has a very high specific heat. Okay, so what is that? Well, specific heat is the amount of heat that is needed to raise a gram of a substance <laughs> um, to a higher temperature, specifically one degree Celsius. You in chemistry might have done a lab um, where you created what's called a calorimeter and you measured um, the specific heats of different materials by looking at how much energy did it take to move the temperature one degree Celsius. Um, it involves little things like styrofoam cups and burning stuff. So it's usually a very favorite lab of students in chemistry. All right, that brings us to pH and water. So the pH of water is seven of pure water. And that means there's usually an equal concentration of hydrogen and OH, which are hydroxide ions, in the solution. And so pH is a measure of the hydrogen concentration in a solution. And if it's an acid, it will tend to have a lot of hydrogens in it. And on the pH scale, we call an acid um, zero to six. Okay, so that's usually on the pH scale. A base, on the other hand, will have a high concentration of hydroxide ions, which are OH ions. And that will range from eight to 14 on the pH scale. So if you're zero to six, you're an acid. Seven is neutral and it's usually water. And then eight to 14 is a base. And this is more of a chemistry definition for pHs. Um, acids tend to donate hydrogen. So when you put an acid in an aqueous solution like water, it will release hydrogen. However, if you put a base in an aqueous solution, it will release hydroxide ions. And that's kind of like the basic chemical definition for a pH. Now, why and how do we apply this to biology? Well, in your body, there's a lot of materials that are buffers. And a buffer is a material that's meant to minimize um, acid or base changes in your body. So you don't, for example, want your blood to become too acidic or too basic. So you have buffers, these chemicals, things in your blood that will absorb either hydrogen or oxygen or forms bonds with these things to minimize the hydrogen or hydroxide concentrations that are occurring in your bloodstream. Okay, so again, the whole purpose of a buffer is to kind of keep the pH neutral. Um, most things work best at neutral pH, pHs.
All right, another cool application that we talk about definitely in AP Environmental Science is when farmers have acidic soil, so their soils have too much acid in them, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll grind up limestone, which is a base, and they'll apply lime, as it's called, to their fields. So here in this picture, you can see um, a tractor applying lime to the fields. And so what will lime do? Well, it will attach to the hydrogen, because lime is a base, so it's hydroxide, attaches to the hydrogen and neutralizes the soil. So it has a neutral pH, so things can grow.